How's it going gamers? You got hands here and today in Dauntless we're going over a guide for your talent tree for heroic frost escalation. This will better help you stay alive and still do great damage so you can get an easy peasy clear and so you can purchase your crown and walk around with some great fashion. I also provided a few builds before these videos to help you that coincide with this talent tree so you can get an easy clear so check those out. So turn on your system, go to your talent tree, and let's get ready. We're about to get in this video right now, gamers. What's up, gamers? I'm sure you're excited to hop in this talent tree guide for heroic frost escalation. This setup is more versed towards keeping you alive and still doing great damage so you can get a clear in heroic escalation. Yes, there's better setups for a general escalation, but like I said, this one's going to keep you alive and get you a clear, so let's do it. So Frozen Armor is a passive upgrade. It isn't that great because 25 health shield really isn't that much, even if it stacks up each round. So we're going to pass this one up right now and look at Zai's Maneuvers. Zai's Maneuvers is pretty cool. Movement speed is nice, but it's not necessarily neat for survivability and damage and then down here in far slayers precision same thing that's gonna change your part damage to wound damage and I definitely don't suggest if you're not that great at dodging or in the game or even holding an in-game build I wouldn't suggest to use this one I wouldn't suggest to use a wound build so we're gonna skip that for now right here Fertline gear is a must because your frostbite rises 10% lower and there's further more of them that stack even higher so we're gonna throw a point into that one as you can see, we still need two or three more points to unlock the next tier. So the next best option, yes, would be this, even though it's not that great. And then we also need another one, so we're going to put two incised maneuvers just to open these up. But like I said, you know my opinion on these. Next is another third line gear. Without a doubt, add a point into that one. Next is Borman's Might, which is really nice because it's a passive stagger hit damage increase which will definitely help you stagger the behemoth, get you more time to do more damage and proc overpower. So we're gonna go ahead and max that one out. Hot and cold. I definitely use this one when I'm soloing and doing great damage. If you can handle it, I would use it, but for right now, we're gonna pass this one up because if you take damage, which you probably are in heroic escalation and dying a lot, your frostbite increases. Therefore, you're gonna end up freezing. So this setup for the talent tree guide is also versed around helping you stay alive, do damage, and not get frozen. So we're gonna go to the next one. Moria's reinforcement is a must have because that is a passive damage reduction, and we really need that to stay alive. Right here is bottled warmth. Through the Braziers continue to prevent frostbite buildup for 8 seconds after leaving the radius. I think these are great because if you happen to freeze, you could run to a Brazier and then run back and do more damage and you have 8 seconds of free time of not freezing. So let's go ahead and add that in there just for survivability so you don't freeze. Next down here is Furline. As we talked about, that is a must have. So since we have the next tier open, you see Heated Blade. I think it's really awesome, especially if you collect all the Braziers because it stacks up increased damage for your next round. So we're going to go ahead and add a point into that. Right here is Warm Blooded. The first time you would become Frostbitten each run, immediately reduce your Frost buildup by 50%. We're going to want that because we don't want to get frozen. We want to stay alive, keep doing damage so we can clear the Heroic. And then our next option is Cat's Claws. That is also a must have because that's a passive damage increase. So you're definitely going to want to put a point, two, or three in that bad boy. It's really dope-tastic. It is awesome. But if you can handle not getting hit, doing great damage, and keep utilizing your avatar so you're doing it frozen. But for this setup, we're not going to use it because if you're a newbie's player or if you don't dodge well and you're not doing great damage and kicking butt, then you're going to get frozen with this one. However, it is really awesome, especially in the easier escalation. Lucky Strikes is a must-have because that's a passive critical strike chance. That's more damage for us, especially in the builds that I showed you previous to this video. They're crit builds, so this really benefits for those builds with this. And the next one is Cold Rush, which is really awesome, especially for our setup that we're doing here. Because when you do kill a behemoth, you get 15% increased attack speed, 10% increased damage, and 25% increased movement speed for two minutes. And that's pretty significant. So we're going to go ahead and pop a point into that. As you can see, we have three points left, and we have all the avatars. 
I would suggest never to add a bunch of points into each one because ideally you're going in for a certain setup with a certain build and the talent tree adjusted to that build. So with the builds that I showed you previous to this, they were crit cunning builds and I believe that is the best one to use because the more crits you do through the run and beat heroic escalation. And what's also great about it is all every time you do a crit, you're reducing your frostbite. And we do a lot of crits, especially with the chain blade builds that I showed you. So we're going to add a point into that. I would think this one wouldn't be that great because when you stagger Behemoth, you know, you lose your frostbite, which is beneficial. But you're not going to be staggering that much, especially with a mid-game newbie-ish type build just trying to stay alive and get through heroic escalation. The next one is the wound one, like we talked about with the passive wound amps or talent tree mods. I wouldn't use this one as well unless you're very good at utilizing a build such as that. The next one you would think, hey hands, why aren't we using the one that heals you? Well, you don't want too much healing. If you're not doing enough damage, you're going to be in the escalation forever. And the builds that I provided before this video has enough survivability and great damage to keep you alive and therefore that's why we're using this one. As you can see, we have two points left over. You would think this one, but like I said, you're going to get frozen if you use that one without a doubt. We also have the opportunity to max out Zai's maneuver or add into hot and cold. I did explain hot and cold will make you freeze, but since we have a lot of survivability and damage and a lot of things fighting our frostbite and two points left over, I would suggest to add two points to it because all it does is increase your frostbite by 2%, but what you're getting is 15% increased attack speed. That's more DPS. That's more chances to crit to reduce your frostbite from your avatar. So therefore that 2% really isn't that bad. Go ahead and pause it and use these points and try out Heroic Escalation with the builds I provided with this setup and I guarantee you will get a clear solo easy. Alright gamers, that's all I got for you today. Hey, if you like this video and you want to see more, please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button and click on that bell for notifications. If you're looking for a crew or just want to chat about Dauntless, join us in Discord. That invite link will be in the video's description. Alright, that's all I got. This is Han signing off. Peace, y'all.